who are you and why are you here? What's my character? I should know that up front. You're a dinosaur expert. <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> why am I here? Well, uh, who are you? Mm. Hi, my name is Aaron Fullen, and I'm the dinosaur expert for the Dragon and the Raven. <laughs> Why did the producers uh, think it was necessary to, <laughs> to have a dinosaur expert on the show? Well, I think that's fairly self-explanatory uh, based on the title. Uh, technically, dragons were uh, dinosaurs, um, Nick. And I think they just really wanted to make sure that the title uh, was well represented uh, with the creature that the dragon was. Um, I think there's a lot of misunderstandings about dragons. Um, you know, what was the temperature of the fire that came out? A lot of people don't have that down. Uh, what color were their scales? That's huge. Um, you know, you can't narrow a dragon down to such a small thing. Uh, there's so much variety in that realm, um, and executive producer Bill Hyde just really wanted to make sure the accuracy was there, and that, that's my job. That's my job. There's a, there's a part when Alfred comes to power, and when he mm -hmm. finds the, the dinosaur eggs. Right, right. Great scene. In, a, in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And he, he is, he is uh, starving, he's naked, mm -hmm. and all he has are these five dinosaur eggs mm -hmm. to defeat the Danes. Right. The, the, the way he hatched them, is that up to, even even by ancient standards, were those, was that good protocol? No, no, uh, not by any means. And, you know, I talked to the producers for quite some time about that whole scene. Uh, frankly, it's going to offend uh, a lot of people like me. Um, it's a battle I fought, didn't win, so that inaccuracy is imprinted in audio and will be until these things go out of print, which hopefully is sooner rather than later. There's, a, there's a, an interesting scene where King Alfred, after his dragons uh, fly off to, I think, to the moon at that one, mm, at that one Jupiter, scene. yeah. Sorry, Jupiter. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he commissions Edmund to build a dragon. Right. And it went pretty well. What kind of, what kind of dragon did Edmund build? Well, it was, um, see... There was, that's another inaccuracy. He built more of a Lagthanon, uh, which is a little bit later in actual history, dragon history, dragonial history. Um, but in reality, it should have been somewhat of a Tracon. Uh, Tracons were popular during that time. Uh, bigger, stronger than most dragons, therefore uh, wiped a whole bunch out. But the problem was, uh, when they were usurped by the Langthians, they... <clears throat> Their fire wasn't as hot, um, and that really was their downfall. Um, dragons with hotter fire came in and boom, wiped them all out. The and, this brings and that's why there's no bones. Right. They're they're all ash. Yes. They did none of no bones are intact. And, and Christians generally ate the dragon bones. Right. Was, mm -hmm. a, was a big part of that. It was so believed to it. help with the sanctification process. Yes, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, there's a scene where um, it's probably my favorite scene. I think it's genius of when uh, Alfred brings in Guthrum into his throne room, and there is uh, this great dragon, and mm -hmm. he says, "Guthrum, tame this dragon." Mm. Yes, yes. And Guthrum has no choice but to ride the dragon. Right. And I think what's helped with that recently is the popularity of the movies, How to Train Your Dragon. Um, which you wouldn't believe how historically accurate this really was. Um, and Guthrum was one of the very first dragon trainers there was, and, there were, was and were. Uh, so I think really he set the stage for that. It wasn't, it wasn't supposed to be possible, uh, but obviously you know how evil uh, Guthrum was. More evil than a dragon, uh, therefore was able to rein all that in and, and to ride him. And luckily he wrote, he wrote and spoke very well, passed it on from one bard to another. And, and finally, there's, uh, there are many children that are going to be listening to this production. Mm. And as, a, as the foremost uh, dragon scientist, scholar, trainer, painter, artist, sculptor, um, 
There's more. Working you. Uh, sorry, I. I feel, uh, That's all right. Really. Move on. Move on. I, I feel small in your in your shadow. Here. Right. Right. Um, what, what would be the lesson that you would give to the children who are going to be watching? Ooh, my goodness. Well, I'd want. I guess what's really important for me in this whole thing is that dragons are recognized. You know, they're not just things that were, you know. Um, I think people have this idea that dragons really aren't relevant anymore. And that's simply not true. That's why stories like this were written, is for people to know Dragons still have a place. I think that's what I want people to walk away with. Thank you. Thanks. If you could turn that off. I'd really... Turn it off. Pete, turn it off. <laughs> 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 Great.